welcome into another episode of Cyberly. I'm your host, Blythe Bremley. Been on this show, we talk about B2B marketing, the attention economy, and how it all fits into the world of logistics. And we have another jam packed show for you today. Today's episode, we've been doing this the last couple of weeks, but this week, we're going to talk about the digital marketing trends and strategies for the top freight tech companies in the United States. Jill from Sold in Naples, I hope I said that right, is breaking down the marketing challenges of the one person team. And then Zach from Benefits for Trucking is talking all about the family business and giving healthcare options to not just drivers, but brokers all over the country. And then we're going to wrap it up with a cool story on a topic called Freight Farms. But before we dive into our first topic, first, we got to tip the band with the Moon Air Group is a leading rec- recruiting firm specializing in the logistics and technology fields. Whether you're looking for a new job in the industry or you're looking to hire top talent, the Moon Air Group has the network strength to meet your needs. Learn more at moonairgroup.com. We also have a link to them in the show notes. So if you want to make it easy, just go on to the show notes and you'll be able to find them pretty quickly. Now, for our first topic, we need to get right to it because how are the top freight companies or freight tech companies treating digital marketing? Now, if you haven't been watching for the past couple of weeks, we first have broken down the top carriers and how they treat digital marketing. And then we also broke down the top freight brokers and how they treat digital marketing. So this week, we're going to kind of wrap it all up and we're going to talk about the freight tech companies. And The way that I'm going to think about this is the methodology behind this is that it's it's challenging to to find these top companies that are, you know, doing a lot of really cool things. So basically what we have to do is use the resources, use the list that are already out there. And one great list that's already out there that has been voted on by a lot of industry folks all across the com- all across the country is the 2022 Freightways top 25 list of freight tech companies. Now I believe voting is currently going on for this year's nominees which will be announced at F3 come November. That's a future freight festival that's happening in Chattanooga in November. If you haven't got your tickets, that's going to be one of the must attend events all uh, really out of the entire year that's going to be a must attend event. So voting I think is currently going on right now if it's not it will start soon. So but this list, what we're going to be talking about is the list that was voted on last year. So it's the most recent list of data that we got. But what makes this kind of exciting is that these are the freight tech companies are arguably the companies that are going to treat digital marketing the most serious. So they're going to be the most invested in media marketing and their website because really like their survival sort of depends on it, getting that awareness out there, getting visitors to their site and getting those visitors to convert and turn into a prospect, turn into a lead, and then ultimately become a customer. So this is where we're really going to get sort of that that really good look at how digital marketing is really being treated by people who are highly focused in the technology space. But with all of that said, after doing this research, there are still so many gaps that need to be filled. And a lot of SMBs, a lot of small small to medium-sized businesses, even large businesses can take advantage of these gaps that are being missed all across different segments of the industry. So whether you're a carrier, 3PL, or a freight tech company, or a service provider, you're, you're bound to find some useful insight from this particular episode because it definitely applies to all segments. But specifically, I think it's more fun to look at the freight tech side of things because of that overall just greater importance on the media and and the marketing side of things. So with all that said, I am only one person. So don't come for me if I make a mistake, slightly make a mistake. This is based on research that I am doing as a one-person team managing a business on top of that and hosting this show. So uh, hopefully I didn't miss anything. I did you know, double and triple check to make sure I got a lot of these things right. But if you see something that maybe I have missed or think or have something that you think that I should know about, please send it my way. You can find all of my social media uh, accounts. You can you know, email me. All of that is available on the Everything is Logistics domain. So everything is logistics.com. Go find me there. And you can send me these examples of freight marketing or just great marketing that you think that more companies should be implementing. So with all that said, let's talk about the elephant in the room and that a recession is here. And with marketing in particular, marketing for a lot of companies is a is an extra 
it's not a main focus. And so when anytime that cost cutting initiatives come into play, marketing is typically the first thing that is cut, whether it's positions or whether it's ad spend or content marketing spend, there's probably going to be some budget cuts being made if they haven't been made already. And usually, I I speak from experience, marketing is the first thing to go. That's why you see across this industry, not necessarily with freight tech, but that's why you see across this industry so many different marketers that are working as a one-person team. They're likely managing several other different roles within the organization, and marketing is just kind of thrown at them. That was my experience, and that's continuously the experience that I see for a lot of marketers out there. But no matter what size business you're in, no matter what kind of team you're structured in, there are still ways to win online. And a lot of these things are going to become increasingly more important as staff shrinks, as budget shrinks. And until we find out where this sort of new normal is going to end up, then you should be looking at everything that you're doing in your marketing mix and in your tech stack in order to find those ways for the find the low hanging fruit. So first, let's talk about some of the cooler things that I saw within the freight tech space. So we talked about that top 25 list, but let's talk about what happens whenever you're actually arriving on one of these websites within that top 25 list. And the most essential thing is to book a meeting. The book a meeting CTA, CTA stands for call to action. It's usually the button that appears in the upper right-hand corner of a website. Now, the reason that it appears in the upper right-hand corner of a website is that typically that first frame of a website that you see, that's called that hero section. You see a headline and then your eyes gaze to the right. This is, this is why websites are designed this way is that you read the headline, your eyes continue to gaze to the right and you see that main call to action. That's why it's placed there. But then you also have the situation where you read in a almost like a sideways triangle format where left to right, and then you go back over. And that's why you commonly will see a CT, another CTA below that headline text. So you read the headline first, and then you see the CTA. And then in case you didn't see it again, or in case there's another CTA that draws your attention more, it's going to be in one of those two places, 90 probably 90% of the time. So with the with keeping that in mind, all of these freight tech companies follow that f- follow that model as far as trying to get your attention. But there were a few of them that stood out to me and the first one I want to point out to is Project 44. You didn't even have to leave their homepage. Once you click on that button, if you're looking at the screen right now, you'll see that's that that's their hero section that is on the first thing that you see when you get to the project 44 website is that hero section now on the right hand side you'll see a large form that that is fills up the screen from top to bottom now that form immediately pops out as soon as you click on the the schedule a demo CTA that's in the upper right hand corner now this pops out and you don't even have to go to another page so that's what I like about this particular example is that they're making it stupid easy to in order for somebody to arrive to their site and then to get the main action completed of what Project 44 wants that user to do. So that's a really good example. The next example that I want to give is for Kites because their demo page takes it up a notch. So once you click on it, they take you to a brand new page. Now, if you're looking at this page, there is a very simple form that's on the left-hand side of the page. It asks for your first as for your full name, your business email, company name, phone number, and then additional comments. But on the right-hand side, they have a video that plays that covers some of the common questions or the common features that they get a lot of questions about within their platform. So if somebody is just browsing and they're not exactly sure if they want to book a meeting yet, they just kind of want to check around and poke around to see if this is the right solution for them, they have that video right there to answer any more of those concerns that a visitor might have or questions that they might have before they actually set up a meeting. So that solution might be right for them or it might not be a good fit for them. But that video is going to help entice them either way in order to complete that form and then to set up that meeting. Now, if you have this option on your site, the next level that you could do is once the user does what you want them to do and actually fills out the form, that next step, I think, is one that we can optimize a little bit more. And a good example of that, we'll go back to Project 44 for a second because they have a really great thank you page that's on there. After you fill out a form, they let you know, hey, thank you. We're going to re- you know, reach out to you as soon as possible. But until then... 
Here is some relative content that we think that you will like. Now, you can do this in, in one of two ways. You can just sort of show like a FAQ article or a, you know, just a general overview article, but you could take it up a notch by in the, in the field of the form that that person is filling out. They're likely going to fill out if they're a technology provider, if they're a 3PL, if they're a carrier, if they're, you know, some other, you know, version of the, in another industry segment, then you can show them customized content content depending on the type of segment that they fall into. So that's taking it up a notch. So it's kind of like setting up dependencies based on the kind of segment that that user falls into and then showing them the relevant content that could answer, you know, additional questions and, and really optimizing that flow for getting the visitor to your site getting them to take the action that they want to take, and then so giving them information while they wait for the scheduling gaps, because that's where I'm going to cover next, because there is a little bit of a gap here, no matter what company that I, out of all the carriers and the brokers and the freight tech companies that I've looked at for these stories over the last few weeks, none of them are using calendar booking tools. And that to me is the biggest gap where a lot of companies can take advantage of today. Now, if you're thinking of like a, a your HubSpot calendar, if you're a HubSpot user, another solution is a, a tool like Calendy, where you have these built-in calendars and you can sync your sales team emails and your sales team calendars to this solution for like a hundred bucks a year and you save a considerable amount of money, but also you put the power in the user's hands that when they're arriving to your, their, your site and they've decided, hey, I want to have a meeting with you guys, you're removing that extra barrier of having to communicate back and forth of when is a good time to meet. Instead, that Calendy calendar or HubSpot calendar can then sync up the availability, the, the, the time that is in your calendar, in your company's calendar. It can sync it up to only show available times to that prospect that is on your website. So you can skip all of the back and forth, you know, what day, what time is good for you. And they can immediately book a meeting and they can get on the phone or they can get on a, you know, a quick Zoom and then have that conversation and they can do it on their own terms. And that's one less thing that they have to worry about. I cannot believe that more companies in the space are not doing this. It drives me crazy because this is an inefficient, this is a, the biggest inefficiency that I see online is the easiest to fix. And it's one of those things that it's most affordable too. It's just, I think, I, I, I don't know why more companies aren't doing this. Maybe it's a lack of knowledge. Maybe it's a lack of awareness or, or maybe it's just a matter of that they haven't just audited this flow in a long time. But that is a huge gap that the SMBs or even large businesses, really any, in any business in any industry should be taking advantage of this because these tools are so advanced, because everybody's working from home. These tools are much more uh, business friendly in order to, to help streamline a lot of these efforts. So that's one big gap that I see missing. Another big gap I see missing, and you have heard me talk about this on several different shows, is the field, how did you hear from, How did you hear about us? The how did you hear about us is the most important thing you need to be adding to your website today. And the reason that you, you want to do this is because it gives you so much more insight versus a, a typical attribution report. Now, for modern B2B buying habits, a lot of these attribution software platforms, so think about you know Marketo, uh, Sixth Sense, uh, HubSpot, a lot of them provide great intent data, but what they don't, where they're missing the mark and where it's not really trackable is to find out what is resonating the most with your audience. And you find out what's resonating the most by adding one field to your website forms, the conversion form, so your book a demo, book a meeting, add how did you hear about us, make it required and make it a free text field. Do not add any drop downs because that will influence what people select. A lot of times people, you know, will get lazy and they'll just pick whatever one from the random list that you have on that that you've listed on your website. Maybe there's some that are that they heard about you and it's not listed on your drop down. By making it a free text field, then you are able to put the power in the user's hands and then they can let you know exactly how they heard of you because I'll give you one example. My business, I, I publish multiple podcasts every single week. And on my lead reports, when I get them each week, when I look at my marketing software, when I look at maybe HubSpot or Google Analytics, the reports are telling me that Google search sent me leads to my site. So when a lead comes to my site and they're filling out that form, 
I'm getting on those marketing reports that Google organic search sent those visitors. And that's where I should technically invest more of my money. But on the how did you hear about us field, the users are overwhelmingly over 80% of the users that come to my website and submit a form are hearing about my company and hearing about me through the podcast. And so if I were to just listen to the attribution reports that big, you know, marketing tech software firms send me, then what I would do, I would probably cut out the podcast altogether and then I would double down on Google search ads. But knowing that I have this information and I'm getting direct customer feedback, that's another instance where you have a situation where you're getting that clear answer from your customer. It's vastly different than what the hub, when you know some of these marketing software companies are going to tell you, and you're going to make the right investments because that's directly what your customers are telling you. So you use both, but you prioritize what is moving the needle by taking direct feedback from your customers. So that was missing on the overwhelming majority of forms that I've seen, especially in the entire industry. If you, I, there was one example where I saw that they did have this, but it was a drop down where you had to select, you know, Instagram or LinkedIn, uh, YouTube, some of these other social media platforms, and that's fine, but it's not going to give you the real raw data that you're really going to use to make real business decisions about what's moving the needle. So a few other things that I want to get into really quick, you know, before we bring on our first guest with Jill, a few other cool things I saw, um, consider making it stupid easy for users to get to your website and then funnel those leads. A good example for this is Convoy, which has really stepped up, side side note, we really stepped up their graphic design game. I, I talked to them over at the, the Freight Waves conference earlier this year, and they said that they have several graphic designers on staff, and you can tell in a lot of their branding. But if you're looking at this page, and it's a contact us page, you're going to fill out, you're going to choose whether you're a shipper, a carrier, or a broker. And what I like about this is that you're funneling whoever is trying to reach out to Convoy contact your company, you're funneling those leads into the appropriate source. Or maybe it's not a lead. Maybe it's it's it, uh, another example, you know, freight tech space um, is not a lead. Maybe it's uh, uh, someone just reaching out for customer service, um, some other kind of need. But at least this way, you are funneling those leads and those customer inquiries into the right place. Another one that I want to give a shout out to is Flexport. They have their blog and their social media strategy is great. They recently released, uh, released like a top uh, 55 like supply chain influencers to follow and what this does is that this helps kind of stroke the ego a little bit of some of the other influencers in the space. So a lot of those influencers see this, they, you know, they, they get really happy, they get really proud, and then they share that with their audience. And so using a strategy like this, really anyone in this industry can do this by creating a top, you know, maybe a 10 drivers to follow or to subscribe to on YouTube or a top 20 shippers to follow on LinkedIn. This is a similar strategy that anyone can replicate. And what it does is it brings awareness, it brings eyeballs to your brand and your solution. So that's another really good one in order to, to you know, I guess, pay attention to or maybe implement into your strategy. And then another one, is truckstop.com. As soon as you arrive to their their website, they kind of punch you in the face like right away with their pricing. And so at truckstop.com, they're letting you know right away, like this is our pricing. And if you want to continue learning more about us, then let's do it. But here is where we're, this is where we stand. Now, 3PLs and carriers, you can't do this unless you're, I guess, a tech-enabled 3PL. But on the flip side, if you're a service provider, if you're a solution provider, then this is a great way to put your pricing front and center so you're not wasting your time getting on meetings with people who can't afford your solution. Now, all of that to say is that as a one-person marketer, how can you use this information? Well, the first one is the book a meeting function should be prominent and you should audit that flow regularly to make sure that those visitors are not only arriving to your site, but then they're being followed up with should they answer that or should they fill out a form in order to get in contact with you. That's where a lot of gaps, it sounds like an easy thing to, to, to make sure that it works right, but you have to audit this on a regular basis to make sure that those leads are being followed up with. And then uh, for God's sakes, Add the how did you hear about us to your forms. It is single-handedly the most important investment you can make in your website. It can be done in as little as an hour, probably less than that, and it can be done for under 100 bucks. It shouldn't cost more than that. Now, use all of this information that I've sort of broken down for you today to 
audit what your current marketing budget looks like, to audit what tech you're purchasing and why you're using it. And if it can be supplemented with another tool or with a tool that you maybe already have, trim that budget, focus on what works, because then you can trim the fat from the budget and then you can double down on what is actually working. So hopefully all of those tips prove valuable to you. I've kind of uh, ran over a little bit of time here. So we're just going to jump right into our first guest because she's going to be able to offer a lot of insight into how you know the one person marketing team can really tackle a lot of these issues that we are seeing in today's freight space and that we will see in the future. Let's go ahead and welcome in Jill. She's the founder and chief strategist at Soul to Naples. Hopefully I pronounced that that company name correctly. Um, Jill, let me know. Did I pronounce it correctly? Oh, I think we have a little, uh, I think we can hear, can we get her volume, the production team? I don't think we can hear Jill. Can Jill, can we hear you now? Hey, good afternoon. How are you guys? Yeah. Thanks for having we me. We got you Thank you for joining the show. Now, uh, for, for folks who, who may not be aware of you and your company and your services, give us a little bit of background on, on how you started working in marketing and how you eventually got into you know, the freight space. Yeah, so I've spent my career in transportation and logistics uh, in a variety of different corporate marketing roles. Um, and about six years ago, I decided to uh, try something different, really go out on my own and start my own marketing services firm. And today, about 70% of my client base is in uh, transportation and logistics. The other 30% is exclusively in the B2B marketing space. So SaaS providers, uh, financial services firms, etc. So it's been a fun ride so far. Uh, I, I look very similar in nature to what you're up to, Blight, these days. Um, just trying to get clients really solid advice about how to um, drive a smarter strategy, how to get the most out of their marketing and sales efforts and and ride the wave of trends. I think you were highlighting earlier in your show this this idea of like a one person marketing team, but also this idea that marketing is the first thing to go right when you get into a recessionary environment. So how can you make the most of the staff that you do have? the tools that you do have at your disposal, and then outsource, outsource some of your marketing to people that can do it better and faster than you can. So 100%. I think that's the thing that I've struggled with the most over my marketing career is learning to trust other people that they will do as good of a job as I would or care as much as I would, which, you know, is kind of a, you know, a hit or miss. But when you find those really good, you know, freelancers in marketing, oh, it is such a blessing. So when, when we were talking beforehand, you know, we, we had talked about a few ideas of what we could talk about for this show. And you sent over just an enormous list of just incredible topics that I feel like <laughs> I could talk about for hours. And one, one of the first ones that, that I want to get into is specific examples of the challenges that freight companies are facing right now. And one of them you, you had kind of just mentioned, you know, the staffing, the, the, the short on staff with too much, with, with too many company branding strategy and communication needs to support a la the one person marketing team. Now, how, I guess, are, are, what is your advice to companies on how to deal with these staffing challenges. You know, maybe somebody is looking at their budget and thinking, oh my gosh, I don't know how I'm going to afford, you know, several different marketing people. How are they ad adjusting what their marketing structure looks like and what their marketing budget mm -hmm. looks like? Yeah. So, I mean, I have clients that have lost um, marketing managers, tried to refill those positions and really struggled. Uh, one client that extended an offer to three different people in a week and got none of them. And that's for a position that had been open since February. I have two other clients who lost their, their leading salespeople. About half of their sales staff is turned over in this post-COVID era. And they basically have no end in sight to when they're going to refill those roles because they can't find the right kind of seasoned professionals to come in uh, at a price, frankly, that they can afford. So um, what are some, some ways that you can combat that in your company? Here's a couple of suggestions. First of all, recognize that when you do find somebody, whether that person's internal or you do find them from outside, they're not going to be immediately productive, right? We have a tendency in this industry to expect that, boom, out of the gate, I'm going to get 110% productivity out of my team members within 90 days. That's not the reality of especially new people coming into this space, their ability to learn 
um, learn the nature of, of your company, learn the nature of the industry, much less uh, begin to apply a lot of the more modern practices that they come into our organizations with in an environment where maybe you haven't had the technology tools in the past and you don't have the internal support and experience for that individual. So give them some space to learn and to grow and to ramp into their role when you do find them. The other thing that you can do is get a little bit more creative. Um, I don't know if many people know this stat, but about 40% of um, the workforce today is working in what's called the gig economy. That is uh, freelancers that are out there looking to do their own gig because maybe they want to surf in the summer in Costa Rica for six weeks, or they want to take a uh, around the world cruise, right? And they want to be able to work from anywhere, anytime on whatever cadence suits them, regardless of time zone. Those people are making up the gig economy and they're really skilled and they're really smart and they don't have any of the internal baggage or constraints of your company. They're just going to race to town with the projects that you give them. So go and look at that gig economy. Great place to start is upwork.com. That is a terrific um, a freelancing kind of network where you can hire people for specific projects. I personally use that solution and the people that are on that uh, site do all sorts of freelance work for me and it's fabulous. They're skilled and they can ramp very, very quickly. Um, the last thing that I'll say is um, with regard to sales and marketing and the whole ecosystem that has kind of shifted and changed, it's really important to recognize that a lot of your buyers today, they have a digital dance. They do a lot of digital research on your company before they're ready to talk to a salesperson. It's important for you to recognize the role that marketing plays in nurturing that much more passive relationship with a potential buyer before they ever get in the door to a salesperson. So get your salespeople thinking like, gosh, the person when they finally come to me is probably pretty well educated. They've probably been on my website multiple times. They might be opening some of the company emails. They've seen my brand out there, maybe in trade shows. A lot of the initial upfront stuff that your salespeople might be doing to try to educate the customer, to try to bring them up to speed on your brand, They've already done all that research. So fast track sales and get them ready for the fact that they're going to have to be doing the pricing and the negotiation pieces of the deal a lot sooner in that initial engagement. And that means they might not have as much time to build the kinds of personal relationships that they want to have. So all good advice for trying to kind of shift and keep up with the most modern trends happening on teams uh, and, and even small teams that are going on out there. I love that you brought that up, that buyers are doing so much more research before they reach out to the sales team, because uh, for a lot of, I think, sales teams uh, currently established, you have sort of like that entry level person that is having that first contact meeting with a buyer who might be more educated on their own product than that salesperson is. And so they kind of waste a lot of time where you could just put them right to like a, I don't want to say like a VP, but it could be like a, you know, an area manager or somebody like that in order to make sure that they're talking to somebody that's kind of like on their level, not to disparage, you know, the entry, entry salespeople, because there's a need for them too. But I, I'm curious as to, from a staffing situation, should you be, you know, sort of mapping out your processes beforehand or, you know, setting up, how can you set your business up for success so that when you are hiring and that when you are, you know, hiring some, some freelancers in the gig economy in order to set your business up for success or any tips in that regard? Yeah, I mean, I think I think alignment, because of what I just described in that buying cycle, the nature of the digital research that goes on, the handoff to sales or even potentially someone else in your organization once that lead really does come in, um, that alignment between sales and marketing and understanding what that needs to look like is mission critical for, for a fast kind of kind of acceleration of that buyer into your sales pipeline. So um, specifically what I mean by that is what's the definition of what a good lead looks like, right? Does marketing agree on what that is? And does sales agree on what that is so that when somebody does come through the door, you can go the extra mile and, and, and convert that person even quicker. And marketing's not inundating sales with a lot of leads that frankly they don't want. 
Um, so that, that alignment between the two areas is really, really important. The other piece that I'll mention about that is really having the technological capability to quickly move buyers through the process. It is not okay for a buyer to have a call with an inside sales rep and that person is you know, pretty knowledgeable, but it takes them three or four more days to have the next level conversation to start working on a bid or start getting pricing. So you, a lot of teams have put in place inside sales roles to do that qualification, which can be highly effective, but technology and, and really using a CRM to, um, to kind of give a common view of that customer and do the right handoffs like within minutes, right? or even an hour or two, certainly same day is an expectation, um, Should be you should be doing that. Uh, sending an email to a sales rep and expecting that they're gonna quickly return a phone call to a customer while they're traveling and on the road is, is just not reasonable. You gotta be faster and you gotta be smarter about using technology to, to help accelerate that buying process. Love that. Well said. Now, now let's let's talk a little bit about the the brand side of things and how that that's a common question I think for a lot of three PLs, a lot of carriers. How to differentiate yourself from the rest of the pack? Do you have any tips for for the carriers and the brokers out there on on how to establish a brand and a brand strategy? Boy, this is a this is a big piece of cake to cut. <laughs> okay, brand <laughs> is a big thing. Your identity is a big thing. Um, so the biggest mistake that I see people out there making in the branding arena specifically is you try to be everything to everybody, right? Yeah. I mean, it's you try to any bid matters, right? Any customer matters. Anything that comes through the door, we're willing to take a look at. That kind of a, of a approach isn't a, it's not really a strategy. It's a it's a reactive will will take a look at anything kind of mentality. The brands that do the best are those that differentiate themselves based on something they're really, really good at. Now, I'll tell you what everybody says that they're good at. And so it shouldn't be one of these three things. OK, everybody says we're really good at relationships. Right. We're really good at like building strong and enduring relationships with our customers. OK, everybody claims that. Another thing everybody says is customer service, right? When you call, we'll answer. When you your delivery window is missed, we'll track it down and solve it, right? Everybody says they can do that. And lastly, everybody says, especially in this day and age, and this has come a long way in our industry, but everybody says, I've got the visibility, right? The technology. <laughs> I knew you were going to say the word. Real-time information, right? Like everybody says, I got, I got the tech, I, I real-time visibility through the technology that I offer. Everybody says those three things. Don't say those, say something different because that's what will differentiate you, right? I'm not gonna give away the secret sauce of some of my customers, but those customers have gone out and talked to their customers and found out what is that secret sauce that you have. That differentiator should become what you set your brand on and what you message about consistently. So that's that's the secret to brand, right? Don't try to be everything to everybody. Recognize that the things that you think are your differentiators are probably the same things all your competitors are saying. Find something that's super special about yourself and then pivot off of that again and again and again. I love that because one one good example that I can give is I I have a client who was he's a freight broker and he wasn't exactly sure how to pitch himself except for the majority of his clients he was shipping uh, windmill fun like the the actual like the I guess the the post that are that for windmills he ships those and I was like that is a great story that is a niche that is what you should double down on as far as your marketing because it helps you stand out instead of using you know sort of the same old terms like like what you had just mentioned all right we got time for a couple more quick questions because speaking of the, of the one person marketing team you're on the board for the TMSA you're also uh -huh. serving as the executive director right now so for for folks who may not be familiar with the TMSA Say. Can you can you give us a little bit of a rundown on on the benefits of of being in the TMSA and and really hanging out with a lot of people that are in the same exact boat as a lot of the one person teams out there? Oh uh, yeah, I'm glad you asked about that. I'm super passionate about TMSA, and you're about to realize that through the comments I'm going to make next. <laughs> but quickly, TMSA stands for the Transportation Marketing and Sales Association. Okay. It's the only association of its kind in logistics and transportation 
for sales and marketing professionals, okay? So if you have a sales role, a commercial development role, a growth role, a marketing role, and no matter what level of seniority you may have in that position, this is the place for you in logistics and transportation. It is an incredibly um, supportive and down to earth group of people that despite the fact that many of them, this is kind of the secret sauce, I guess, of TMSA, if you will. The one thing that is super unique and super cool about the association is that despite most of these people that belong, there's about 600 members today, despite this, these people that belong there being competitors, sometimes direct competitors, they are incredibly invested and selfless in helping each other succeed. And so um, that might come to, sh you know, sharing tips about how to get started in podcasting, right? It might be um, sharing tips on like how to find your secret sauce and your brand identity. Like these are people that come together and talk about those things and help support and develop each other so they can go back to their businesses and just be better salespeople and marketers. It is a super interesting and fun association. The people that are there, like I said, are super down to earth. And the cool thing is, if you are in an executive role, so, so you have to make budget decisions for sales and marketing in your organization, if you have to oversee the quality of the customer experience in your company, we are holding an executive summit for those kinds of roles in Buckhead in Atlanta uh, at the Intercontinental on October 20th and 21st. We just opened registration this week, but you will get to rub elbows with who's who in executive roles in logistics and transportation companies at that event. It's a super valuable opportunity. There's nothing else like it that we've come across in the market. So uh, don't lose a chance to really leverage the insights and the capabilities of some of your peers who can really help pull you up. I, I love that you brought that up because that was going to be my final question because it, it is such, I went to my first TMSA event just a couple months ago is down in Orlando. And that was the first time that I have ever been surrounded by other people that are, have, you know, been in my exact same shoes. And you, you think from, you know, before you're going to go to the event, I'm not sharing any of my secrets with any of these people, but that is the sort of the ethos of why you go to these events because you can learn so much and you might not apply what everybody else is doing or even your direct competitors of what they're doing, but you can get inspiration. You can get those tips of what's worked for other people and apply it to how it might work for your company. So even though it's competition, a rise, a, what do they say? A rising tide lifts all sales. It really is true with the TMSA. So I appreciate you, you, you bringing that to everybody's attention. All right, Jill, where can folks follow more of your work, follow the TMSA, all of that good stuff? Yeah, so TMSA, you can go to tmsatoday.org or events.tmsatoday.org uh, for information about TMSA. Um, for myself, you can find me on LinkedIn. Be happy to connect with any of you that are out there listening today. And uh, you can also visit my website, which is soul, S O L D A D E, naples.com. Um, and I'm thrilled to be here. Thanks for inviting me. Awesome. Thank you so much, Jill. You're, you're, you're a pleasure and a wealth of knowledge. We'll have to do this again soon. I love it. Take care. Have a great afternoon. Awesome. Thank you. Likewise. All right. Well, that was a really good sort of one-two punch with the first segment and Jill's interview really um, just hammering it home as far as, you know, everything that's important in the marketing landscape that's going on right now. So if you're facing any of those challenges, just know that you are not alone, but also there are other resources out in the world, especially with the TMSA that you can take advantage of to feel a lot less lonely out there. All right, before we bring on our next guest, want to boost your bottom line? Start with hiring the right talent. The Moon Air Group is a leading recruiting firm that specializes in identifying the top logistics and technology talent. Take the first step towards growing your business by visiting moonairgroup.com. Now let's go ahead and bring on our next guest. His name is Zach. He is the president at Benefits for Trucking. I'm not even going to try to pronounce your last name. So Zach, please tell us how you say your last name. Oh, it's just how it looks. It's always, I know it's a little intimidating, but it's Swartz and Druber. So it's German. It means black grapes. I was, I was going to pronounce it that way. And I said, no, but I yeah. don't butcher it. So, oh, good. Perfect. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Pleasure to be no, here. I, Thanks so much for the invite. 
Absolutely. Now, now you, I was listening to a couple other interviews that you've done previously. And what I found really fascinating is that you with benefits for trucking, you're, it's a family business and you guys have been around for what, close to 50 years now. Can you give us a, a, I guess, a historical breakdown yeah. of how benefits for trucking came to life? Yeah, absolutely. So we, yeah, we started with my grandfather in 1974. Uh, my father, he joined the agency in 1981 and it was uh, right into the mid eighties when they were granted approval to work with some trucking companies and see how that went with uh, some of the insurance carriers that we work with. So it went really well. And here we are over 35 years later, still working with the transportation space. And it uh, has become my favorite industry really quickly when I started back in, oh my gosh, it's 2002. So 20 years ago, I joined the family business and the culture and the obviously the, the essential business that transportation and logistics is to our economy worldwide, but obviously we focus on the U.S. here with the insurance side. It I have always gravitated towards it because of the family type of culture that trucking is, uh, the small businesses across the United States that are trucking. Uh, you know, that's a majority of what we talk to are those smaller fleets, brokerages, uh, dispatch companies, even recruiting companies we have as clients. And it's uh, it was just an, an easy thing to go and be a niche. And that's kind of where our path went is let's decide. Uh, I, I was a little selfish and, and I think it was, it's okay when you're in the leadership role to, uh, you know, grab it and go with the direction that you want and, and go with your gut as I always do. And I decided, you know what, I, I just want to focus on this industry and it's been a blessing for us. And the amount of things we've uncovered is pretty eye opening, alarming, exciting, uh, there's a lot of different things and emotions going on, but it, yeah, it's been a wonderful ride and the history has been fun to uh, look back and uh, grandpa would be proud right now. I think he'll, he'll definitely uh, agree with that. Oh, I love that. So it, I love it uh, because so much of the trucking business really is a, a family business. And and I think that that's what you guys are providing for, for folks over at benefits for trucking. <laughs> How, what does the, I guess the current business model look like? Is it, is it, you know, are, are a lot of trucking companies just don't have, you know, health insurance whatsoever? What does that, I guess, sort of that landscape look like and, and how are you helping them? Yeah, un unfortunately for the industry, we've uncovered over the last two years, we've been uh, focusing on trucking as a niche for us, specifically and no more marketing to any other uh, space out there. We've uncovered a ton of these conversations that our area managers are having with the small fleets. And, and that can be all the way up to 50 drivers in some situations that the common answer, unfortunately, is we don't have any benefits or they might have one option, which is health, which is really important. But to be competitive, you can't go without benefits for an offering. And we got hyper focused and it's been a mission for us to always be open to exploring new relationships with uh, solutions on the product side and the, the service side, how to educate these folks on what, you know, what's available because the landscape has changed so much. Uh, unfortunately, the especially the health insurance market got a really bad taste in its mouth during the Affordable Care Act changes and uh, the mandates and all of that. That I think a lot of the, and this is me assuming, just you know, educated assumption here, that a lot of these small companies, they kind of just unplugged from uh, exploring anymore. And they said, mm -hmm. no, thanks, not dealing with that. It's too high priced with really low value. These deductibles are ridiculous. Why should I even buy this? And it's just been put to the side. So we're just trying to, uh, you know, start those conversations up again and bring to light that the market has changed and in a lot of categories is now pivoting into changing for the consumers, uh, I, I guess, for, for their value a little bit more to have a plan option or plan options that you can actually go use without being dinged with a massive bill like we're, we were all used to for so many years. Now, for a lot of these companies, you know, they, I think it's something like 90% of the carriers in this country have, have seven trucks or less. For a lot of these, what should they know before? They, they, they probably know that, hey, I do need to offer some kind of, you know, health insurance benefits package, you know, for my employees and for my drivers. But how do they know what to offer? What, what, what does that first, I guess, sort of educational phone call look like with them? What kind of questions are they asking or what should they know ahead of time before they go shopping? I think the most common thing that we run into is the price situation. You know, they, they want to know what the pricing is going to be. Is it going to be affordable and is the value going to be there? So that that's our approach that everything that we're bringing into our benefit menu option is 
for one, it need, well, it needs to be a price that is affordable for both parties, even for owner operators. We have options for those fleets that we run into on the daily basis where it's a couple office people and a mid to even large size fleet of owner operators that have no option and they feel that they should just let them be stranded to figure it out on their own because they're uh, independently contracted. But we, we have relationships to be able to bring the high value to them still without even having to be connected as an employee-employer relationship. So we, we're attacking it in a different way to not not just put the menu in place, but put the value in place so they want to stick around and, and drive for your brand. Uh, and they have something that they're not going to avoid using so they can stay on the road, they can stay healthier, be more productive, obviously. A lot of the even virtual care, obviously that market has, has blown up in a positive manner, but now we are also seeing uh, some virtual mental help as well. Uh, so it's really cool to be able to get all of these aspects in there. And it, we're, it's kind of a power statement here, but literally regardless of the budget that these small companies have, may that be the fleets, the dispatch companies, the recruiting companies, across the board, we have solutions regardless of what that budget is. It's just taking that discovery step and actually understanding what that is and we make it very easy because we leverage tech. I've been really enjoying this episode that you've been doing. And I've been making some notes and I've been, you know, studying my website while you're going through all these things. I'm like, what do I need to adjust? But we oh, need to yeah. <laughs> always put ourselves in, in the seat of the consumer experience, even before you get into it, because they're so busy. Uh, the small business owner in general, even I feel like it's inflated uh, with the transport space, the amount of hats they wear. And then we're asking, hey, would you like to spend 20 minutes with the stranger to figure out if we can do benefits and step into this dark room of mystery with us? It, and nobody wants to do that these days. Uh, they, they need content. So being that we kept seeing this unfortunate cookie cutter situation where no benefits, no benefits, no benefits, we said, you know what? We know we have an awesome overall package that we can deliver. And let's just let's give it to them in a video so they understand it. They can take this home sit on the couch and watch it. If they're taking a break during lunch, you know, I watch things on my phone during lunch uh, all the time. They can just sit there and be educated on what 90% of our, our clients go with. Our BFT benefit package is kind of our, our staple offering to make sure these small fleets have high value competitive offering. And they, they don't have to step into a meeting, book that meeting, which you, you got to have the calendar link. Absolutely. Like you were talking <laughs> about earlier. You have to. Uh, but you want them to come into that meeting with clarity and what's really on my plate, what's pricing really going to look like. So that's our, our whole process. We don't waste time when we're on the phone because we still use the phone just like it's 1980. Grandpa would be proud on the phone work that we do. <laughs> but we have to reach the audience via phone because they're so busy. They're not spending a lot of time probably on social media. Some will, some won't, obviously. But we want to make sure that we're calling those that don't and bringing that conversation to light. And, and we just we grill through it real quick, a little power statement about what we specialize in, ask them how many employees, how many drivers, any owner operators, and what's your benefit package and scale of one to 10. Like, where are you sitting on this topic? Because we're not here to just like change people's minds about seeing value in insurance, but we want to bring to light what's possible. So if they're seven or above on that scale of one to 10, we're like, cool, we'll send you a video proposal. Two days from now, we want to book a meeting with you uh, right now before we get off the phone. So we're not chasing you for three weeks or three months. And let's talk about those questions that you're going to have, because you'll have a couple of them. And then we implement and it's all hands off from there. We take care of the entire process because drivers are uh, very busy. Everybody's busy. You don't just give them a brand new software platform and say, here, enroll in benefits, protect yourself the right way. Like We have benefit counselors and advisors that go one to one, walk through everything, pre-enrollment video communication. We have leveraged video like no other time in our history. And it's been a blessing because it's all, all of the clients that we were bringing on board, they've all seen the BFT benefit package video or a custom version of it if they already have some benefits and we need to bring a custom solution to play. So yeah, it's stay open-minded. That's our, our big message. Stay open-minded to uh, things not always being the same and your business is going to go in a different direction and your growth is going to be better because it's, I think it's in the it's in the top five uh, for concerns on the drivers and the fleets out there is getting benefits in place. So I'm okay with being five, like the fifth on the menu. That's okay. It's still vital. 
And so when you're when you're creating these packages, say you know I, I'm a solo business owner, or I'm an owner operator, or maybe I'm you know a, a freight agent and I'm working independently. I am the only employee. Are there salute? Do you have solutions like that for employees like that, or is there is is yours more solution geared towards you know the the people who have more than you know say just the one person team? Yeah, we do both. Yeah, I've been diligent about figuring it out, uh, and we've uncovered because we were always local B two B. We weren't really because n- not too many people in the insurance business uh, want to live the luxury life of going to sit at people's kitchen tables. And when you're doing local business, that's that's what that image is. In the transport space, uh, it's different. Obviously, there's so many owner operators. What over six hundred thousand, right? In in the U.S., if I'm hitting that right, if I'm not, I apologize. But there's so many out there that they struggle to find some solutions, and we. Uh, we even have all the way down to a 401k if you're an S corp filing, uh, even as a fully independent owner operator, we, we have a solution to even get a 401k going for yourself, which is, that was oh, wow. crazy for, yeah, I know I was, I was blown away when they said they, they're willing to do that because not a lot of the 401k experience out there when you don't have a balance involved, because uh, that's where a lot of the money's made just to be transparent in the 401k world is mm-hmm. when you have a balance, it's percentage based and you get some, you know, perk off of that as an advisor. But yeah, we we landed an awesome health relationship, dental, vision, short and long term disability, critical illness. You, you it's, it's pretty much a full menu side by side, and that gives the flexibility to those those uh, owners that have the full uh, full fleet of only owner operators, and they don't want to have any tie whatsoever, like no settlement mm-hmm. deductions. They don't want to do that, but they want to provide resources. We can we can absolutely do that, and still that message is because you know. ABC Transport is connecting you with benefits for trucking. They're going to take care of you, and we want to make sure your family, your business, and everything involved is protected. So they're going to reach out to you. We just need that support to make sure we can have those conversations. Yeah, I mean, it sounds like everything that I, you know, I, I've seen in your previous interviews, and then everything that you you've talked about today. It sounds like you are taking the enormous challenge of trying to get people on health insurance so they avoid catastrophe in the future, and you're doing things the right way. I saw you also partnered with the trucking fitness company, Mark Manera. He's been a guest on this show before, so it's all yeah, around awesome healthy lifestyle, and that's what you're promoting, and 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 that's a hundred percent what I what I'm here for. And I might be giving you a call after the show is over because I need to get my health insurance and my health care packages <laughs> up to date yeah, uh, for this S Corp over here. <laughs> yeah. What's really cool. All right, well, I'm going to, I'm going to plug him real quick before we wrap up that because I know he changed to supply chain fitness. Now he changed from trucking fitness to supply chain. I don't know if you saw that because he wants to encompass everybody in the, in the healthy, you know, nutrition fitness guidance. But one of our carriers, uh, we have an exclusive offer that they, they gave us the green light and said yes to Mark and ourselves that we integrated his, uh, supply chain fitness, truck fit, uh, like shop fit. He's got a bunch of different fits now for solutions, but it comes built into our health plan. And it's not an extra add on that you have to have an extra expense. It's everybody's offered that. So if they want the nutrition guidance or if they want the fitness guidance, it's right there. And we have, we're exclusive. And it's kind of fun to be in the insurance space with an exclusive product build. Nobody really typically has that. So it's a blessing. Uh, we're fortunate. And yeah, thanks for helping us uh, be able to spread the word about what we're doing and and how we can help. So hopefully we have some people that would love to have some conversations. No pressure. We don't do pressure here whatsoever. 100% love the message and love the goals that, that you're striving for. Where can folks follow, you know, maybe request a quote, check out some of those videos. Is it benefitsfortrucking.com? Yep. Uh, yep. That was an eye opener when it was available. So very direct. We get a lot of people to go, we're not trucking. I'm like, no, I couldn't have transportation is a longer word. Let's do trucking. <laughs> so benefits for trucking.com, a lot of resources on there in, in our toolbox outside that we're connected to trusted resources that uh, are not specifically what we handle, but that's, uh, that's where you go book a meeting on there. If you'd like, otherwise fill out a form and we'll send you a, a custom video proposal, even without the salesperson. We just, we blast it out there so we can have a conversation Uh, four steps into the process. Perfect. Awesome insight, awesome information, and I will be contacting you soon. So thank you so much, Zach. All right. Sounds good. Thank you. All right. Well, that's, uh, that wraps up really two valuable, super informative conversations. Now, we only got a couple minutes left, so I want to make sure that I highlight this story for folks who wanted to stick around and sort of tune in. But Freight farms. Let's go ahead and play this video of what the freight farm actually is. And if you're watching the, or if you're listening to this rather, essentially what it is, is a container that is outfitted to have a hydroponic 
vertical garden inside. Now, the cool thing about these containers is that anywhere in the country can have a farm. And some of these, these really cool stats that come out of this discussion or come out of this plan, I guess I should say, is each container can hold up to 13,000 plants and they can be used in any neighborhood, which should help areas, you know, with, with little access to fresh produce. So 13,000 plants, access to fresh produce. This system that being used is called hydroponics. So it uses uh, 98% less water than soil farming and yields four acres worth of produce in a 500 square foot container. It's really an amazing thing of, you, you know, you kind of always seen, you know, like a container housing and things like that, that that's gone on um, trying to repurpose containers into sort of a, a modern fit of how it can help, you know, a modern day environment. And, you know, container housing is kind of hit or miss for me, but these freight farm containers are, are really just, I, I think it's just that next step that can help not only within the United States, but I think it can help globally as well. Now they're a little bit on the pricier side, but the cool thing about this program over at Freight Farms is that they help you through that educational journey, not only with running the facility inside. So it's great for schools. It's great for, you know, a chef, um, but they also help you with financing because there's a lot of agriculture bonds. I think it's called actually the Aggie bond that you can, that they will help you get secured in order to have access, you know, to these different solutions. And it's, I, I think it's a great initiative. So if you wanted to learn more, go check them out, freightfarms.com. Also follow them on social media. They have a lot of really good informational videos that really show like the power of just these small area farming. So hopefully, you know, you found some value in that. Go check out that website for more information. Like I said, 13 thousand plants can grow in that little container that about does it for this week's show make sure you tune in next week at thursday 2 p.m in order to see more from cyberly once again my name is blythe brumley and i hope you guys have a really good week